it was at that point I just knew I sat there and I was like yeah no I can't do this I have to leave and I was literally in the porter's lodge crying it's too much to process that something that wasn't part of my plan is happening <laughs> hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm here with a major life update as you can tell from the title but you hate it when youtubers are so much more dramatic than life actually is but to me this was the most dramatic thing in the world so i might as well retell it in such a dramatic manner so some of you may know that i left uni at cut in october and so yeah i've been home since october so this video will just be me talking about what led me to make that decision and it was only literally up until like four weeks ago where I've been able to just process everything and come to terms with everything so yeah I think I'm just ready to like come here and talk about it what I'm doing right now is called intermission intermission is taking a pause or a break from your studies when I had come to Cambridge I knew that intermission was a thing but I didn't know it was a thing thing so I thought it was one of those like frowned upon esoteric things that like you can do in theory but in reality that doesn't happen so in my mind I am graduating 2020 I started year 7 in 2010 and in my mind, I am getting my graduation certificate in 2020. It all begins in January last year when things literally went... And I... Oh. I suddenly found it really um, physically painful to do certain things that required my hands. At first, I left it thinking that it would go away. Fast forward to March, I'm banging out an essay last minute like usual. And then I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe things aren't going away. And so I tried a whole host of holistic approaches, like sleeping with a hot water bottle, which I got a burn from. Like, And then I went to the GP to tell them that something's up. I thought over the Easter holidays, I'll just get time to rest and recuperate and maybe when I come back to uni after the Easter holidays, everything will be calm because obviously after Easter holidays, it's exam time and nope, that did not happen. <laughs> so for exams, I ended up having special arrangements because of the thing. I say thing because have I even been diagnosed? Do I even know what it is? I literally remember leaving my last exam after doing like some 20 something hours of being in an exam um, conditions. My body was throbbing. When I say throbbing, I mean like... So if you've watched my penultimate video, then you'll know that bear in mind all in the background of this I've got a dissertation to do I've got a portfolio of three 2000 word essays to do and I've got my exams and to revise for exams so this is why I said Cambridge killed me but I powered through anyway and then it's summer and I'm like okay it's summer holiday I don't have people chasing me for essays weekly essays dissertation essays, portfolio essays, I don't have exams to revise for, so I'm gonna rest. And <laughs> I get to the end of summer now. Just before we go back, I email all of the relevant people, giving them like basically a catch up as to what's been happening. These are the people I've seen. And as well, during second year, um, my DOS knew and some of my supervisors knew what had been going on. And so everything was documented because it's even in my formal reports. If anything at all in uni happens, leave a paper trail. This is important in case something else happens later on, let's say in exam term or that you need to leave. Uh, the uni have it documented that something has been an issue. But after how rough second year was, I accepted I got a tutu. I was beyond excited to finally reach third year because third year in terms of English lit was, is, is the year. When I had first applied, um, actually part two of Tripos, which is third year, is what I had like applied for, if that makes sense. I had mentally and physically prepared myself over the summer just to be able to 
be in a position where I can give everything to this year. Uh, for third year, what I planned is to stay in Cambridge the entire year because it's third year and just bang out. So when I moved back, I proper decorated my room, but it's actually so cute. Like. I proper decorated everything. I moved back on a Saturday and then on the Sunday I was back in the library putting in shifts. And the issue is I was back to the same habits and lifestyle that kind of put me in this position in the first place anyway. At this point it's week zero. I've gone to see my tutor to discuss what I'd emailed at the end of summer to be like this is what's going on. I've gone to the GP that same week um, just before I'd seen my tutor and the, the GP was like, girl, <laughs> I went to see my tutor and I was like, okay, I, I'm not making a decision to intimate, but we'll see how it goes by the end of term. At this point, I'm still like, I've got a dissertation to do this term and a dissertation to do next term. So everything, I don't care my health, everything can go to the back of my mind. I'm coming here to get my degree. That's what I was here to do. Week one begins and in Cambridge, weeks begin on a Thursday. So it's now Thursday, it's week one. I wake up at 5.30, I go to the gym. I've got my 9am lecture. Best believe I'm gonna be there, cycle into lecture. Um, go to lectures and then I sat down and that's when I knew I sat there and I knew I couldn't do it it was at that point I just knew I sat there and I was like yeah no I can't do this I have to leave and I was in so much pain and it was so difficult to write the heartbreaking thing is that the lecture was so good and I was like so excited for third year and and this is the first day I cycled back to Homerton and I went into my room and I just thought like after having powered through second year after having done everything in my power in the summer to feel better after like just being so mentally into that year this is happening and so I literally just broke down and cried I have not cried in my time at Cambridge I've tried my best to like keep it together I said in my other video that the time I nearly cried was when my supervisor added me in my email with my DOS. And that night, I literally cried. I think I was cooking or something, and so I locked myself out. I'm walking to the porter's lodge to go get a new key. In the staircase, crying, crying, crying. And I was literally in the porter's lodge, crying. I hadn't like wanted to face the reality of the position I'm in, and that I just can't, I can't physically do my work and messaged DK in and then um, called me here and I was just on the phone with me here crying 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 and I loved him so much because he was just like trying to comfort me and like doing everything possible to like not have me cry um, DK had messaged um, yeah I'm in are you okay but I had ignored it but then DK actually came to my room to see me and then um, when he knocked on my door I like got it all together talking to DK like this I'm literally talking to DK like all hype whatever and then I start crying so I'm literally crying and talking to DK like tears are rolling down my eyes but I'm still talking like this and I won't let myself break and DK was sitting there like oh my god like he was terrified he was like what the hell <laughs> he came to sit next to me and he was like she Stop. From that point on, finished. I let it all out and I told DK everything. After this night, I decided, okay, the intermission's looking like a reality. So let me like ask some people that have had this experience, what their experience has been like. I've had two friends, two really close friends that I had intermitted. And when they intermitted, I was like, good for you. It's so good that you're making such a mature decision for yourself. You go look after yourself. Don't let this Cambridge break you, etc., etc. But with me, I was like, no, you have to stay. Like, the timeline is supposed to be, you have to stay in Cambridge. Just, there's just a lot going on at this point. I spoke to Ibs, he said, listen sis, it's a year. Some people take gap years before they get to uni, some people take gap years after uni, and I had actually planned to take a gap year after uni. And so he was just like, it's a year. And Leanne said that to me, it's a year. And everyone was saying it's a year, but me, I'm not, re remember like my mindset is like, you need to get this done. I'm not registering it and it's not going in. And it's too much to process that something that wasn't part of my plan is happening. I've moved to Cambridge, I've, I've decorated my room. I want to graduate with my friends. I can't just bounce. 
and so everyone was trying to drill, drill it into me that it's just a year so after 54 pounds worth of doctor's notes and that's that's a different conversation that we need to have because my bank finally gone to see the senior tutor and my dos and we had a meeting about my intermission and in the meeting guys i was crying i've never cried like that in front of adults i was crying i was you know just they were like trying to talk and I was just there with tissues like crying, crying, crying and I was so embarrassed. I feel like I was trying to live up to the version of me that I think that other people have the idea of me which is to be strong and to power on and to get through things. If I tell you what I went through in year 12, you would be like, sis. And I knew I'd gotten through something difficult as well as having my academia in the lifeline before so I was like I can do it again but I couldn't my body caved in and I couldn't and it's like I couldn't work at the pace that my mind wanted me to work and I couldn't like I physically just couldn't do it so I was like okay like you can't just you can't do your third year like this and Ruben even said that to me like you'll be so disappointed if you graduate and you don't like the grade on the paper because you would have known that you could have given yourself a year out to just rest and my dust actually said to me i like knowing all of this you shouldn't have sat second year exams because you are already at a disadvantage and so i was hysterical in that meeting basically they were like yeah you can go home and i had to take everything off it was so sad i just left <laughs> like this has been like just a complete turn everything upside down for me and so I've really had to like sit down and speak to myself. I think it has taught me that for all that I am self-aware, I'm not at the same time. Like so many people like I was close to or saw regularly said they felt so bad that they didn't recognize anything in second year or that they didn't know that something was up. And I was like, I said to them, I was the one hiding it. So you couldn't have known. And so I, I think I learned a lot about having to be vulnerable. It has taught me a lot about the value of rest and the toxicity of age-based goals. So like superficial, if that makes sense. We have a lot of people that say, I've done this by this age, or I wanna achieve this by this age, or I'm only this age and I've done this. Not only is everyone's timeline different, and not only does it not matter what age you do things, age-based goals put you under like unnecessary pressure to have completed everything. And yes, life is short, but you don't need to race through it at the same time. It comes with the conditioning of kind of being told that you go to school, you do your GCSEs, you do your A-levels, then you go to uni, you do your three years, then you get your job. Just kind of um, convey about life. And life doesn't work like that. And so I just want students to know that life happens. I was one of those that like saw uni as such a linear process and that nothing can like get in the way of this and I just need to complete this. To share this in the hopes that, I don't know, someone might be going through something at uni right now or you're even considering taking a year out. Me personally, I'm now a merchant of intermission. I would encourage anyone to put their health first, like so many people were telling me for so long. <laughs> but I finally get it now, I've seen the light. If at all you're feeling like something's overwhelming or you can't do it, or even if you have like an inkling, just don't suffer in silence, please tell someone. Just it's one email. One of my friends, Raf, said to me, like, these things are built into the system for a reason. Sometimes they're not expecting you to just bam, bam, bam through your degree. They have this clause for a reason. So take it and just rest. And it's been really hard to rest, but that's a different story. And I'll do like a whole discussion about actual intermission and what it's actually like. Because guys, the amount of crises these I've had is mad. No matter how painful this has all been, even if I didn't want it, I know that God wants it and God has planned it. Who am I to be like, no, it's not in my plan. That's my life update. I'm just at home. I'm kind of chilling. Obviously my health is still a ways. And I just pray. I'm trying to get back on this YouTube thing. As you can see, we're coming with a rebrand because... Who said that? Who said that? I said that. And I talk a lot. So I thought it would be fitting. A shout out to Olivia because she actually came up with it. So it's her brains, not mine. I hope that you like this video. And thank you for watching. And I'll speak to you later. Bye.